Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability. Your benefit of the course is you get basic understanding of the principle of the electric grid, you will understand the tasks to be solved and I will give you also explanation of typical solutions as state of the art. As disclaimer, especially in this section, I want to mention that these explanations are based on fundamentals. They do not replace detailed engineering, but I want to give you a basic understanding and a general overview. So, for the sake of completeness, the essentials for resilient electricity systems, as they are given in this course, are focus number one, energy as a global quantity, and focus number two is power as a local quantity. And here you can see the typical sections of this course. Today we want to concentrate on the current flow, network structures and transmission capacity and so let's get started. So there are two limitations. One is concerning current, the other one is concerning voltage and these together means limiting the transport capacity. So the current limitations are applied to the general rule from the generation, the power is transferred to the users, to the loads or to the infeeds. Let's make a sidestep. The sidestep is we watch what happens in a DC system concerning the current density. In a DC system, the current density is level all across the cross section. Also, due to electromagnetic laws, there is a magnetic field circling around this current. Now, when we come to AC, this electromagnetic field changes and it generates the so-called eddy currents, which are given as little red circles. And if you watch carefully, for example, at the top of this drawing, you see current flow. So this means altogether the current density is high at the outer fringes and is low at the center of such a line. Now calculations show that this so-called penetration depth is something like nine millimeters in material like copper or aluminum, which we engineers apply for the transport of electrical energy. And this generally means that only a surface of 200 square millimeters can be used. And in order not to get overheating on such a line, a typical line current under these circumstances results in 500 amps. Here you can see a typical application for a 400 kV cable. You see the active core of the cable is limited to a thickness of something like nine millimeters. And when we come to a medium voltage cable, we can see these two nine millimeters are compressed together, give a diameter of something like 18 millimeters. The same, by the way, applies to overhead lines. We can see here a high voltage 400 kV overhead line. And also these general rule that the cross section is limited by these eddy currents applies to medium voltage overhead lines. Now, from these contemplations, the current limitations, which lead to power transport limitations, can be derived. So, power is voltage time current. This means the peak load means peak power, and this means peak current, and the peak infeed power for generation as well means, again, peak current. And here we come to iron rule number one. This means never exceed the maximum line current for more than 50 minutes, never exceed the maximum line load for more than 15 minutes. Now a little calculation follows. Power is voltage time currents and in a single phase system, this is the formula given for this. P is V times current. In a three phase system, we have three voltages, three current, the so-called phase voltages, phase currents. And after some transformations, we arrive at the formula given in yellow. Don't be confused, I give you an explanation and an example. We assume that we have a 130 kV overhead lines with a nominal current of 500 amps and here we arrive that the maximum transportable power is something like 114 megawatts. Now let's compare two figures. 132 kV result in 114 megawatts and this leads to a general rule. This means kilovolts is approximately as a rough estimation the same as the megawatts. So this is very crude, but practical. As I told you, there are also voltage limitations, which lead again to power transport limitations. So the voltage limitations are derived from Ohm's law. You can see here, this is a little joke. The current in green is pushed by the voltage. 
the little blue person and the resistance tries to limit the whole things. So the result is voltage across a line is resistant time current. This is the so-called Ohm's law. So here I give it again. And as a professor, I must say there is one more thing. This is concerning the reactive components. But for the sake of simplification, we stay to the first simple ohmic law. And now let's help Professor Einstein to solve this and transfer this knowledge into the transport limitations due to voltage losses. So the voltage loss across a line should be limited. So, for example, we do not want to lose more than 5% of the voltage seen from the input to the output to the end of the line. And therefore, this means we can calculate now with these figures. The resistance depends on the line length. You see at the right side there is L line. This is the line length. <clears throat> the current is somehow always, as you saw, like 500 amps. And these 5% of the phase voltage can be transferred into this voltage of no more than 3810 volts. Now we can from this equation determine the line length. And the line length here results in 102 kilometers. And now again, let's compare these two figures. The nominal voltage of the line, 132 kV, and the line length, which somehow results in a tolerable voltage loss across this line. Again, from here, it can be arrived that is a very rough rule of thumb that the kilometers correspond to the kilovolts. So this again is crude, but practical. Now, we repeat these two crude, but practical rules. So kilometers is more or less corresponding to the kilovolts. <clears throat> and this means to raise the transport reach, we must raise the transport voltage level. So the second line, was already shown in the first part of my presentation. This is that the kilovolts correspond to the megawatt that can be transported due to the current limitation. And here, to raise the transport capacity, we again must raise the transport voltage level. So, the topology determines the distance over which this electric power has to be transported, and the load and in-feed demand determines the megawatts that are taken out of such a system. And to make these demands in a practical way applicable, we need good engineers to solve this. It is not a puzzle, but it is a good engineering task. And I think we as engineers can be very proud that we solve this in a very reliable form. So this was today's lecture about current flow, network structures and transmission capacity. I thank you very much for staying on till the end of my presentation. Hope to see you again in the next of my courses. Thank you very much.